I want to talk to all of you good people about Back to the Future. A movie franchise considered memorable by many 80s enthusiasts. But first, let's talk about acquisition in case you suddenly get the urge to order it from Amazon or something. As far as I know, there are a few trilogies available. First, being an ordinary Blu-ray 25th edition, and second, the 35th edition, which comes in, I think, regular or 4K um, but I know there is a 4K version out there for somewhere around 35 to 40 and that seems to be the common price point for the 25th edition. All right. Oh, man. I mean, there's just so much to think about here, you know? First... This movie franchise, the movie soundtracks are consistently good across the board, from one all the way to three. And I would say they are the kind of movies anyone could get into. We have a Total Loser by... Um, the story standards, Marty McFly, a musician, and is kind of a troublemaker of sorts, at least by the standards of the teaching staff in his uh, local school. And his family is always getting pushed around by this douche called Biff. And, I mean, if you've never seen this guy... Way back when, I mean, good grief. He is definitely the kind of guy who you would imagine might end up in jail someday. So, Marty McFly, he helps out this old uh, genius, uh, Dr. Emmett Brown. And so, Emmett, Br uh, Emmett Brown comes back uh, around one day driving the DeLorean time machine. And, you know, the car, as far as a franchise goes, didn't really survive. But I'll tell you, everyone who remembers the 80s remembers that car. In my opinion, it's probably... Right up there with 60s and 70s muscle cars. The steel body construction. And the way it looks after Emmett Brown pimps it up for time travel. And so what ends up happening is the good doctor was tasked by terrorists to build them a nuclear bomb. So... He basically gives them the middle finger and decides, you know, I'm going to build something cool. And he puts his idea to test. The flux capacitor. I'm probably saying it wrong, but let's go with it, okay? So, um, you know, Marty McFly just sees this and he's just kind of shocked. And... You know, trouble uh, happens, and it forces Marty McFly to use the DeLorean to go into the past. A time which uh, Emmett Brown set the uh, time circuits to. And this is where things get interesting because, you know, a, ray, a nuclear material aka plutonium isn't so easily acquired back then or even the future but you know it puts him into a series of events because he screws up his parents meeting 
and has to put them together. So in a way, it's kind of a romance science fiction flick. The first one. Then we have the second. And it's basically... Marty fixing his own screw-ups once again. Where he unknowingly gives Biff the means to change his future. And I'll be honest, I really didn't like this one at all. In fact, usually whenever I'm watching Back to the Future at all... I'm watching the first or the third. Good soundtrack. I just didn't like the story. And to quote someone from the Amico community, don't be soft. So. Um, they kind of succeed. But something happens that puts Dr. Emmett Brown back in time to the Old West. And this is where the third movie starts. Now, keep in mind here that I think of this as one giant movie broken up into three parts. So it's definitely something you could watch all the way across in one day and... It would make more sense. Just watching it in parts. If you've never seen this before. I don't know if I would ever do that to anyone. But it's definitely something worth binge watching. Just to understand the events which take place from one movie. Which transitions into another. So the third one. It's actually kind of interesting. Like I said, it's kind of an old uh, Western flick. Combined with science fiction. So, they did a really good job with this one in mixing different genres together. And you kind of have those Western tropes. But let's get to me talking about the movie some more, okay? So... Marty McFly ends up talking with Emmett Brown's um, younger counterpart again. And they concoct this scheme to get Marty back into the past to rescue Emmett Brown's older counterpart. Because apparently something off is uh, uh, supposed to happen to him. No, I'm not going to tell you what it is. You got to watch the movies for yourself. And once again, they meet another one of Biff's um, ancestors. So you have Biff in the first one, his kid. And older self in the second and the third, his uh, old Western ancestor, who was an outlaw. Rob trains the whole nine yards. And so, while the good doctor is smoozing this girl who was supposed to die, they saved her life. And that's kind of interesting because... The ravine she uh, was supposed to fall into is called Clara's Ravine because that's where all the students dream about throwing their uh, teachers. And so uh, Emmett Brown is just love struck like a puppy. He's thinking about her all the time when he isn't trying to get them into the future again. Because wouldn't you know, they have plutonium, but there's no gas. Um, I think that's the one thing I really don't like about the movies across the board. There's always something 
in the way of bad plot devices. Yes, I know, I said it, but, I mean, come on here, folks. So, they get to this awesome sequence, which um, their plan succeeds. Marty gets um, back to the future, but Emmett Brown is left behind because he is trying to save the girl he loved. And I think one of the best sequences at the end was that time train, which Emmett Brown apparently worked on. Talking about a big plot device. But it was just so cool the way that train just came out of nowhere. So... What else can I say about this franchise as all? Well? well, the characters are really good. I gotta say that. Even though I may not like the second one, I'd say I like the characters in each movie. And if I had to say which one I like the most... I think it would be Back to the Future, the first one. So, I hope you enjoy this, and have a nice day.